Does it look cool? Yep. You sure? Yep. It looks really cool? Yep. And it's rolling? Yes. The red light's on right now. Yes. On this episode of Shenanigans Wrench Repeat, we revive a monster truck El Camino that has been sitting in this barn for 23 years. So it begins. Tilt it up on its points instead of the point of the, instead of the cow here. And then we'll shimmy that way and then carefully lean it up against that old stove. The Inter Camino, built, owned, and operated by Andy and Randy. What you got here is a 345 small block international V8. And uh, it looks pretty rough. This will be interesting. Huh. So I guess time to yank the spark plugs out. Start dumping ATF down the cylinders. Stuff made for racing and stuff. I've had to edit out so many cuss words. <laughs> we gonna remember where all these go? No. I'm gonna stick it right there on each header pipe that goes to that cylinder. See what I mean? Yeah. And hopefully that means we won't lose track. So. Just to take a minute to thank Dad for using really, really, really nice spark plug wires. And he built it to last. Well, he built it to use very, 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 very heavily. This thing had a, the pinnacle of a hard life. We may just have to share this ratchet forever. Ah! Got a plug loose. Got another one loose. There's three. This plug looks really good. Should I? Well, no, I, duh. I still gotta take them all out and put ATF in there. Um, I don't wanna lay these spark plugs in uh, mouse crap. To put it nicely. That's the nicest way I can say it. In mouth shenanigans? Yeah, in mouth shenanigans. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> what are the odds? Of this? I'm going to be able to keep this. Yeah, I kicked, I kicked it earlier. Did I tell you last night I went to Dad's for supper? I went back later for supper. Anyway, I learned a lot more about the El Camino. I learned about what I told you that he put a really nice aftermarket coil in it. Mm -hmm. And this thing was eating starters, so he finally took the original starter that came with this engine to some place back in the 80s, I don't even remember where it would have been, and um, 
had it rebuilt, and they rebuilt it as heavy duty as they could possibly rebuild a starter. So he, I asked him if uh, he thinks the starter will work, or if I'm going to be SOL. And he said, it should be okay, because it's a really heavy duty rebuilt starter. down the cylinders at the moment so I've moved on to panicking about how seized the motor is going to be we found out the throttle is basically rusted wide open which is great because that means every animal that has been in this engine bay and stood on top of this carburetor has filled the carburetor with urine and whatever else they might push out of themselves. And that means we've got a problem. How did they work on this thing back in the day? This is ridiculous. I'll tell you what though, this is stout. This thing, it's good and stout. Getting there a little bit at a time. I can't see anything on the camera, so I'm just hoping this is a good one. Good news the throttle was not rusted open and seized open. There's no return spring on the throttle linkage. So that is why the gas pedal was just sitting on the floor. But there's still there's still a lot of underlying issues. But it's not as bad as I thought it was just a couple seconds ago. So I think what's going on here is the last person that ran it put a two barrel carburetor back on it and I think that was an, an attempt to remedy the flooding. You remember me telling you it floods real easy? Mm -hmm. uh, my cousin Joshua said that he remembers specifically when they used to drive it that it, it's very easy to flood it when you're starting it and um, then obviously you got to let it sit for a long time. Yeah. But um, he must have put a two-barrel carburetor on it. I really wish there was something covering this. This is really disappointing. <laughs> it might not be seized. Go set that back up. Uh, for the spark plug. So we've got a funnel. It's not, it's not bolted into the front. Hose clamped to about four foot of fuel line. This is how we're going to get ATF into the cylinders. I still haven't got this mastered yet. How do you plan on dumping ATF down the other side? As a... I think I'm going to have to end up going head first into the engine bay to get those plugs out because I don't think you're going to win that battle you're fighting over there. That would be a uh, good thumbnail. What? Head first and yeah. out. Man. I can't believe you know what a thumbnail is. He keeps the line. Not really. Do you have a hose? Come in. There we go. go into the furthest one back towards the firewall. Wow, I've got way too much hose here. Yeah. Put a band in it and get it in there. 
I've got way too much hose here, Brandon. That's it. She is in a circuit. It is? Yeah. Make sure you're not lighting in front of the camera. I probably was the whole time. Well, that's okay. Let me edit it out. Just me all this. So, I'm just going to put a little bit down there. You got it in the cell, in the hole? Yeah, it's in the hole. Okay. Hold it there. It failed. Can you edit my face out of this the whole no. time? No. I look like crap. Well, that's why it's keep, make sure you don't look at the camera. Not have, I can see the side of my face. I know, but just don't look at the camera. Might get a YouTube girlfriend out of this. That's funny. You're <laughs> <laughs> great dad. Okay. I'm going to do a little informational bit here. You ready? Here you go. The plan is that the ATF is going to help free up the motor a little bit better even though it might not even be totally seized. And then I will hook power to it, hopefully the starter works, turn the starter over with the ignition off and make sure that we get oil pressure on the gauge. Any oil pressure at this point is better than none. And then once we confirm we have oil pressure, we'll start taking the steps to get the engine to fire. I'll let the thing go. Is it too soon? Is it too soon to try to turn the thing? I would go for any sign of movement at this point. It moved. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna push my left. It moved. I tried going this way, and I think I was fighting the motor, so the belt tried to slip, and I went this way, and the crank went. I'm still concerned about the fact that the thing is open. Which one is it? I'm going to get the camera all filled that the crank will move, but we don't have any other information at the moment. You have some pretty good content on here if you just left all the Well, you remember me texting you and saying the Malibu video has turned into a long one? That's because the first section of it, when I did the passenger side, I talked to the camera a lot, which is great. But I had to time lapse the second one because, I mean, it was, it's an hour and 10 minutes long. We hold that right there. You can see the screen, can't you? Yeah. All right, you ready? Yep. So we've got ATF down all four cylinders on the passenger side and I couldn't contain my excitement and I wanted to turn the fan a little bit and um, you can just barely see it but the crank did turn see could you see it in the video yeah I'm gonna give it one more but I don't want to push my luck uh, yep. So the crank does turn, which is very exciting. Now we will try to get all the driver side spark plugs out and get ATF down the cylinders on that side. We can't film that side for you guys because we have to access all of them from this uh, trapezoid shaped hole right here and there's no room for the camera. I'm going to need you to ignore the piece of firewood jammed in the PCV valve. Thanks. <laughs> yes that's a PCV valve custom by the way I'm going to put it back you can shut it off so we've got cylinder uh, no I'll edit that out so we've got ATF down all eight cylinders <coughs> just to help lubricate it a little bit <coughs> Added out all these coughs. And now I'm going to turn the engine over one full rotation if I can with the fan. This wet mark here is WD 40, and that's how we know whenever we've made a full rotation with the fan. A sticky spot, not too big of a deal. 
be expected after sitting this long. <coughs> We're spewing ATF everywhere, and that's what we like to see. Oh, there's a tough spot. <coughs> so time to find a socket for the crank pulley and put it on there. <coughs> I think I've sucked up some mouse nest or mouse hair or something. <coughs> this spinning, it's, I'm only going to need like a freaking 15 second clip of it, but <coughs> I want it for the viewers. Should I talk? Okay. <clears throat> so we overcame the little tough spot um, where I'm sure there was just a little corrosion ring from where the pistons were sitting and they needed to overcome that ring to get past where they had been sitting. And now I've got a ratchet with a little pipe on it, nothing crazy, and it swirls over pretty dang good considering <clears throat> how long it's been sitting. We're just going to keep going round and round. Work that ATF down in there real good. It's still spewing out of some of them. Oh, yeah, smoothed up really nice right there. <clears throat> I'm loving it. And there's that tight spot again. <clears throat> We're still working some of that corrosion out. Which is to be expected. So there you go. It's free. On to more exciting things. We're rolling. Uh huh. Just leave it pretty far. We can get a load of this live action. So the motor's good and free. Spun her over probably a dozen times. And now I have to get out of here. Stand here and hand me stuff if I need it. <laughs> Am I in the shop or not so much? The chest is. There we go, just barely. So we're in the bed of the El Camino now, and I'm trying to get in the frame of the camera, so that's what's up with this position I'm in. The battery goes back here right next to the fuel tank, which is for maximum safety. And this is the fuel tank itself. It is definitely just the steel drum that's been turned into a fuel tank. There's only about an inch and a half of fuel in it, so here in a little while we're going to drain that, get some fresh gas in the system. But right now I'm going to hook the battery up. There's no battery hold down anywhere back here. There might have been. They probably just uh, crammed it between the roll bar and the front. I think they bungee strapped it to the roll bar. I would, that wouldn't surprise me. That is one of the most 80s things I've ever seen. I love it. Okay. No regrets. I think our power cable is, or positive cable is on. I'm going to get a lot of hate comments because I just called it a power cable. So, this is the part where it could go bad. You don't think the truck would lurch forward, do you? Don't need to. I know, but if the clutch is seized to something, I'm going to have to edit all this out. I mean, it can't fire the keys out of the ignition. Exactly. If it does anything, it might jump forward an inch. Okay, so I'm going to smack the negative 
post with the negative cable just to be sure that nothing is going to blow up or cause issues. I should have brought a no a uh, terminal cleaner. Mm. You got a lot of brush in here. The metal on the door swinging around <laughs> scares me every time it does it. I don't hear anything, which is good news, and that means that. Everything is hooked up properly. Properly. We'll go with that. Everything's hooked up properly. So, now what? Hit the key? Yeah. Not with me up here. <laughs> you can turn the video off. No, yeah, it's not. Blap. I'm lying to you, Brandon. Blap. Whatever that just was that you were doing. Nothing funny. Yep, you're good. Red lights on? Yeah. So I gotta edit all this out? Yeah. Awesome. Well, you don't have to. Me trying to make the shot perfect. <laughs> you can't see the light itself, right? Uh, no. The actual light? No. You can't see it? No. Is it making it glary to where you can't see anything? Well, I'll sit in there real quick. I don't have an aim to see the driver. I'm going to have to figure this out at some point. Ooh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah! This is for the blooper reel montage of me climbing in and out of things. Okay, the red light's on? Yeah. So i got to edit all this out right now. Me talking to you and asking you if the red light's you on? You don't have to. Okay, I about need sunglasses in here. How's the picture look? Uh, you're pretty lit up. The dash is pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay, so we hooked the battery up. We just set the cables on there. Nothing crazy. Now I'm going to turn the key on and see if anything happens when I turn the key on. So the key is in the on position. I think we might not be live. Can you see the switches in the shot? No. So, these switches run the whole show, and I'm pretty sure when they are all up, that means they are off. There's indicator bulbs here that I don't know if they will work or not, but I have flipped all the switches with those battery cables on, and nothing has happened yet, so I don't know as of right now what's going on i turned the key all the way forward and nothing happened yet so we will do some looking around and try again shortly okay so right here behind the driver's seat right there is a main battery shut off switch that is why we didn't have anything happening earlier. So now we have a couple mood lights in the inside. And <coughs> I 
Got a couple headlights. Got two out of five cab lights and one out of two off-road lights. <coughs> we have not tried the starter yet. We were way too excited about the lights working to do anything else after they came on. So here shortly, we'll try the starter and see what happens. Okay, you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. This, this rolling. So pick her up. You can fold the daily. Well, let's pick the daily bag up. You can fold all this up. So now that we know how the battery turns on and off, we're going to bump the key and see if the starter does anything. I'm guessing we're going to need to get, climb up in the bed and tighten down those battery cable ends before it'll do anything. But just for fun, I'm going to hit the key real quick. And then aim it at the lighter. With all the tools out of the way. On the floor, remember? No, I'm afraid this one has this time. What does that smell? Is this thing on fire? You yeah. sprayed starting fluid in here. I did not spray it, I set it down in there. Uh, one of us must have glitched it. Mm. Got rid of it. It's potent in here. You <laughs> got rid of the cat pit or the. Uh, now, how you got to turn the power key? The power switch. You said whenever you go to try to start it, you have to have it switch on. Okay. Well, it's in neutral. I'm going to press the clutch in just for fun. I'm going to put my foot on the brake just for fun. Uh, that was the windshield wiper, in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> okay. we got to tighten up the battery cable in. But... Luckily, the ignition cylinder does work like it's supposed to. Got the cable ends tightened up on the battery. So well, let's try this again. switch on and see if it has a safety Try it. to keep the starter from going. Try it. Did you hear a noise? Sound like it's something. No. I'm hearing the uh, light. Mm -hmm. Second switch. The second switch. Now the 
associate with it. The indicator lights work. Some of them. starter doesn't do anything, so we're going to do some troubleshooting and see what we find. So I'm going to attempt to climb in here to get my peepers on the starter and see what's going on down there as far as corrosion and stuff like that. So wish me luck. Starter down there. All the wires are hooked to it. Is it still on? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got our new starter, and now begins the debacle of getting it in there. I guess uh, this was a big age of washer. Wouldn't be too hard for a guy to lose, I'll tell you that, for right now. Am I supposed to be prepared for to put this back in? Uh, oh, okay. okay. I'm holding that. That's pretty good. That engine is just right. Yeah. It's just right in the way, man.
scared to see what happens but hopefully the engine cranks over so we turn the main power on behind the seat here we've got interior lights and all the switches in the ceiling are off so clutch in and the brake even though it's pointless Okay, are you afraid? First of all, I gotta pause so that I can edit this part out where I just can't think of what to say. Or maybe I'll leave it. So the engine cranked over. My battery's a little low, but that's not a big deal. I'm gonna have my cameraman go over to the side where the cylinders are full of ATF and see if we can't get a good shot of some carnage of just red blood colored stuff flying out of the side of the engine. If you need the flashlight, I can give it to you. I got one. Don't get the baby done. It'll fly all over you. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Yeah, it's spinning. So I'm going to take the carburetor off and clean a couple things. 
Let me see if we can get it to run on this carb without rebuilding it, but I'm not very optimistic about that. Look at this high quality uh, return spring. I mean, that's some, that's a good unit right there. I, uh, I mean, look at that. There's the, there's the high torque half of it, and then there's the low torque half of it. <laughs> Guess what? We're going to start it with that on there. <laughs> Talk about what? Nothing. I got a predicament here, my dude. Hmm. Maybe not. Okay, time to lose the gloves. We're working with small enough stuff. I can't. Uh, I can't maneuver anything in here. Red light still on. Yeah, I've got like a billion uh, shots where I ask you that. Mm -hmm. Is that good, Brandon? I actually got some on here today. One's blowing just right. Brandon sitting on into the walk-in door. I didn't hear myself. see if we can use a flare nut wrench on a regular nut because I need a 3 8 and I don't have a set I don't have another 3 8 handy it's over there in another toolbox somewhere is it in the red box yeah I don't need it the flare nut wrench is just about the right thing for the job it's built for full sins only why well, okay. make it nice I'll do some plumbing here. There it is. Can you see it? Yeah. That's it. Old Holly two barrel. Not in terrible shape considering its environment for the last 23 years. We're going to do some cleaning on it and um, in the meantime we might see about uh, shooting a little bit of starting fluid in the intake. Not not too much, just, just a little bit, just to maybe get a little blurble out of the engine to motivate us to keep going. <laughs> um, but right now, I'm going to set this back down just to cover the intake up, and I'm going to do a little bit of vacuuming around it. Make sure these throttle blades are shut. You'd be surprised. There's not much stuff down in there. There'd be a lot of uh, poo sitting on that uh, adapter plate thing down in there. And um, there's not there's not much stuff sitting on there. That's good. I'm gonna hit her one more time with the carb off. First time trying to fire the intercamino. Crank on it and if it fires, you know how to act whenever an engine fires. But as far as the cranking, if I say, whoa, shut her down. And I'll say whoa well, when I'm ready to use, for you to turn the engine off with the switches too. I just want to be as safe as we can be. You're in neutral? Yeah. Wiggle it for fun. Crank on it. Whoa! 
whoa, whoa. Why did it get so hard? The plugs are in, so it's compressed. That's why. It shouldn't be that hard. Okay, crank on it. Okay, hold on. Can you jump down and go back there and put the battery charger on boost? Make sure your first two switches are off. Crank on it. Okay, so we borrowed a battery from my dad because my old battery was pretty pitiful um, when it came to turning over the motor. It's a good battery for me. But I think it just doesn't quite have the cold crank amp left in it to be good for an engine that's been sitting in a barn for a long time. No, I need uh, I need my rubber mallet to break this uh, seal I got going on here. It's uh it's on the bench from because that's how you take carburetors apart with rubber mallets. <laughs> Kids, don't try this at home. That's an old coal there. Did you know that there was such thing as an old coal? No. Oh my gosh. I'm absolutely covered in it. Keep it upright like a cup now. It's even got a handle like a mug. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Don't touch it. Please put it back together. This is not good. I do not have extra pants with me. Napkins, wipe it up with a napkin. I need those red rags. That's what I need right now. Oh no. Somebody's gonna think I'm a dummy for doing that. <laughs> Oh no. I'm so bummed. Bro. See if that's on camera. That big that, that big old bill. You getting it? Yeah. I'm freaking bummed. I am absolutely drenched in oil. Okay, stop the video. I did. Technology is officially out to get. Can you see the red rag? Yep. Right now? Oh, not on your leg. I see the one in there. Oh, this one right here. Can you see it? Not the one on your leg. You can't see it? No. At all? It's dark. Can you see it now? Yes. This is how you remedy whenever you dump an entire quart of oil on your leg. So... We went and tracked down a new coil, and it is not the same as the one we removed, but 
we're hoping that it will work anyway. Are you in there? Yeah. Finally got in, huh? Okay, main power on, please. Yeah, I'm just checking the... Oh my gosh, that hurt. I'm just checking the main powers and stuff here. Okay, turn the first two switches on. Okay, so this is our first test of the new coil. Just barely tap the starter. Tap it. Tap it. Hold it over. Still getting nothing. That means the old coil was probably fine. Well, I think the, it's more likely the fact that we're silly and we don't know what we're doing. I think I'm going to have to leave out this entire video because I don't think I'm doing this right. I don't think I'm testing it right the way you are supposed to test this type of ignition system. Because I don't know what I'm doing. I may have mentioned that before. I don't know nothing about points and coils. Do you? We're going to remove the custom uh, intake manifold space carb cover thing. Okay, I sanded the points a little bit, but I have a feeling that we're still not going to get it to fire because we don't know what we're doing when it comes to points ignition systems, but we'll try. Main power on. First two switches on. Tap the starter. Okay, crank on it till I say whoa. guess we have is that the condenser was bad all along and that we bought a coil pack for no reason so luckily our local parts store will let us take back the coil that we didn't end up needing but we're going to run it first to make sure it's good and we'll shelf test it for them okay so we think this right here is junk, which I think that's pretty much a reasonable assumption to make. So, we'll see about getting another one and 
trying again. We've made our third parts run of the day to get a power resistor. So now I'm going to hook it up. I think that helps that screw hole is tripped. And I'm super excited about that because that means we're not going to be able to keep this tight. No, that's the the threaded part is wouldn't come with the new stuff. <laughs> so here we have the points and condenser mounting plate that goes in the distributor. And this hole right here, right there, is holding up the whole show because it's stripped out and that hole is the hole that you use to set your points gap so the reason we're not getting any spark is because there's no gap so this week I've got to get that hole drilled and tapped and then we'll put everything back together and hopefully that fixes it. But I need you over there. Because I'm going to have you put a ranch on the back side of that. Can't really see what we're doing, but it's fine. You get to just put the coil back in. You hold this right there. Where you see me? No.
part series of the revival. The first episode, which you just watched, we got the engine to fire. And the second episode, we'll be getting it out of this barn because the door to your right is broken and does not open anymore. So we blew a giant hole in the wall. And that's how the El Camino is coming out of here. So stay tuned for removing the inter Camino from the barn. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it won't be near as long as this first video. This first one ended up being quite the project. But we got it, finally. Thanks. <laughs> 